psychotropic fungi, the ones that will change your mind uh, that uh, Michael Pollan wrote about. And I talked earlier tonight about the Alice in Wonderland fungi and why you don't want to eat them and why the government likes you eating them because it makes you more violent, more likely to beat up your neighbors and go to war. And they were often used for that exact purpose. But now I want to talk about the mushrooms that make you want to make peace and love one another because they are highly illegal. <laughs> and in 1957, I had just turned a teenager, I was 13 years old. We were subscribing to Life magazine in my home, but for some reason I still can't quite understand, I never saw this magazine, this issue. But R. Gordon Wasson had been tra traveling to Mexico for about five previous years and experiencing the trips due to the mushrooms that became known as the psilocybe, psilocybin mushrooms. And here is R. Gordon Wasson taking six pair, and this is an important number, because I'm going to use this later in my own research, six pair of a specific mushroom, and it, it's a psilocybe uh, species. It wasn't yet named at the time. It was named later. And... Uh, I, I know it's precise chemistry, and that was an important fact. And then two young psychologists at Harvard, psychology faculty, were assigned to really change, shake up the way psychology is taught at Harvard. And so Richard Alpert and Timothy Leary did indeed shake up how uh, philosophy was taught at Harvard, but they were eliminating the use of this mushroom only to graduate students. And Dr. A Andrew Weil, who later became Dr. Andrew Weil when he got his PhD at Harvard the same year that I got my PhD in chemistry at the University of Washington, he was an editor of the Crimson, the newspaper of Harvard, and he exposed what Timothy Leary and Andrew and... Uh, Richard Alpert were up to, and they got fired. And of course, Timothy Leary went out with his make love, not war stories. And I thought Ram Dass was just sort of some sort of hippie name. And I met Ram Dass in uh, 1999, but it was in 2010 <laughs> when I had to write two articles for Fungi Magazine I looked up and found out that Ram Das means servant of God. Prior to eating the psilocybes himself, Timothy Leary, I mean, not, I'm, I'm sorry, Richard Alpert, was a non-practicing Jew. After eating the mushrooms, he found them to be a deeply, deeply religious and moving experience, and he went to India and studied Indian uh, war and lifestyles. So it literally means servant of God, and that's what he became. Psilocybe commences is the mushroom that Timothy Leary used, and that's now the mushroom that in some states is either legal or decriminalized, but it can't be generally openly used. But this is something that I, I would like to see changed. And so when Paul Stamets showed up, Jeremy Bigwood showed up, Jonathan Ott showed up, I was in a thing called the contract pool. They wanted to study mushrooms. I had never heard of psilocybin or psilocybe. By January, I had a Schedule I drug license, also a Schedule II, three, and four drug license, and a prescription book. I had pure psilocybin and pure psilocin, all courtesy of Jeremy Bigwood who Paul and I years later figured was a CIA plant. But meanwhile, the very first psilocybin conference was the spring of 1976, Miller Sylvania State Park near Olympia. Gaston Guzman is on the right, 
One of my graduate chemistry professors, Scott Chilton, is on the left in the, in the top corner. Gaston Gustan is the Mexican, the leading psilocybe expert in the world. And in the next slide over in the top, this Dr. Daniel Stunts in the V-neck, he's the most brilliant, kind, gentle man we've ever, I've ever known. He was the most popular professor at the whole University of Washington. He's talking to Gaston Guzman and a couple of, of friends of mine who are philosophy seekers. Down in the bottom, we see, bottom left is Andy Weil with the, with the black hat. The red hat is Dr. Alexander H. Smith from the University of Michigan. He was then the most famous mycologist in all of North America, and he's talking to Gary Linkoff, and Gary was a friend of mine. And over on the right is Steve Pollack, and he was known as the, as the Texas philosophy doctor. And one day when Paul Stamets was talking to him on the phone, Paul heard several gunshots, and this guy was murdered. And years later, they found a tape in the back of a, of a returned rental car and it was a Texas Ranger that murdered him because he was making psilocybin available. But this is also a period of a great deal of writing about the Ammonite muscaria, that would be Soma. And Jonathan Ott, one of my students, wrote Hallucinogenic Plants of North America. He also translated Albert Hoffman's LSD, My Problem Child, from German into English. Now, Albert Hoffman accidentally discovered LSD. He was trying to develop a drug to halt postpartum bleeding in, in pregnancies, and he ate lunch with it one day without washing his hands. And he made that mistake almost every day until he was 102. <laughs> and for... Paul worked exclusively with me for his entire four years. I mean, he interacted with Alex Smith and all these other people, but I gave him all of his academic credit. Graduate thesis, basically graduating senior, he published Mushroom Cultivator with, with another author who was working at the time for Ostrom's Mushroom Company on growing mushrooms, and he, grow, he published Psilocybe Mushrooms and Their Allies, and then Jonathan and Jeremy did Teonata Connell, and then there was these, uh, so this, is, this period, there's this flourishment of these books out there. And meanwhile, Terence McKenna is out there talking about how philosophy mushrooms are being from Mars that have come to in, invade us. And his thesis is that the humans had expanded their brain and become humans because as they were following the ungulates that they were hunting, they would see these great big beautiful mushrooms that can be the size of a, of a coffee saucer, not the size of a dinner plate, but they can be very large, they're very meaty and very, very delicious, and it's Psilocybe cubensis. It's growing all over the neotropical world. And so this is Terence McKenna's thesis. Well, my mentor, the third honor grand, grandmother of my kids, was Kit Skates, Kit Skates Barnard, she wanted to know what philosophies were like. I'd been doing research on them for 10 years. This is about 1985 now. And I'd never tried them. And my students said, well, you need to know what it's like. <laughs> so having a Schedule One license and people being used to seeing me picking philosophies and whatever I wanted to pick, I was in the parkway, the Central Parkway at Evergreen Campus, and I picked 200 Liberty Caps. And knowing the, and I had done the chemistry, so I knew that 200 Liberty Caps, that 12 Liberty Caps was the same concentration as, as the amount of philosophies that Wasson had taken. So Gary Linkoff, who was then president of the North American Mycological Association, and nobody in NAMA was allowed to talk about philosophies or say anything about them or do anything with it. So I've got Gary the president, I have the vice president of NAMA, who's Kit Skates, who wanted to try the mushrooms, I have the secretary of NAMA and myself, so we each took our six pair of Liberty Caps. And in about 30 minutes, 
Gary and Linnea were tripping nicely, and they went off to listen to Terrence McKenna's lecture over in the main building at Brighton Bush. We're at the Brighton Bush Hot Springs. Set in, and set and setting is very important when you do psilocybe. So we're in a beautiful old growth forest. It's a drizzly, rainy night, but very just beautiful. And Kit and I are sitting there looking at each other, no effect. And we waited almost an hour, and she said, okay. So we took 30 more each. <laughs> well, you know, we were a little impatient. We waited, and we waited. Nothing. So we finished off the, the rest of the 200 between us. And then we went to listen to Terrence's talk. And Gary is just sitting in the audience, just giving Terrence hell. I mean, he's higher than a kite, you know, and laughing and giggling. He wasn't at the, at the heroic dose level where you're in the full-scale visions, but he was in the laughing and silly stage. And Kit and I are just really disappointed. But somebody was handing around a bag of psilocybe cyanescence, which is twice as strong as the Liberty Caps, so I ate about 20 of those. Oh my God. And then eventually Terrence quit droning on about these beings from outer space. And, Kit, and it was time for Kit and I to uh, retire for the night. And Maggie Rogers, who I've told you about earlier today, was our guide. She was our safety. So I'm walking, I walk Kit and, ha and Maggie back to their cabin, but on the front porch, there was this guy standing with a bag of Psilocybe cubensis. So I took a double handful of those, and I ate those while I was walking Kitten. And Kit still has had no effect. She's, she's at about eight times the normal dose and no effect at all. So they go to bed, and then I'm a wine lover, as some of you know, and a winemaker for 52 years. And this other... Uh, researcher was working on Norabeo Siston, and he was a wine lover, and he had three of these fabulous David Bruce Reds. So the three of us, the two of us, ate the, drank those three bottles of, oh of, of wine. <laughs> Everybody else in the room is tripping. They're just <laughs> quiet, peaceful, silent, just quietly having their trip. And man, I'm getting really bummed. And so I said, well, it's time to go to bed. So I went back to my cabin, laid down, closed my eyes, and left the planet. <laughs> it was very beautiful. Incredible. These, the visions were all in blue because blue is the, col the false color of the scanning electron microscope that we'd been using to study mushrooms. But it was also the bluing of psilocybe, so I thought it was very natural. After about 15 minutes, I was getting scared. I wasn't sure if I could get back to Earth. Now, I opened my eyes, and it was all over. So I got up, went over, and knocked on Kit and Maggie's cabin door. They got up, and Kit was desperate for more mushrooms. Oh, what happened? I'm sorry. Anyway, so Kit's... But we'd eaten them all. There wasn't anything left. So we went back. So Kit and Maggie came to the cabin... And by then, Gary and Linnea had also come back to the cabin. And I was, um, I would just lay down, pull a sleeping bag over my head, and I would narrate the visions. And this went on for a couple of hours, and then they got tired and they all went to bed. Exactly six hours after the last mushrooms, I went, oh, and it was over. So I go to, I go to breakfast, and there's Andy Weil and Paul Stamets sitting at the table, and I told them what I had done. And I said, well, I've got to have breakfast real fast and drive straight up to my vineyard. So I get in my car right after breakfast, and I got about 10 miles down the road, and I couldn't keep the car on the road anymore. I was totally petrified. I got out, and I looked at the left front tire, and it was gone. I'd had a flat and driven on it, so all I did is change the tire, and then I finished the drive home. But ever since then, I have been far more empathetic and far more caring. 
and it was a permanent change.